Redfish get on top of him. Go get on top of him. It's the 2009 Redfish Cup. Two in the box. Two in the box. Stay by. He got it. With both barrels playing. Oh, he's a good one, too. Oh, yes. That's what it's about right there. You know where he's going this. I tell you what. <laughs> Doing battle to earn their way to the championship and get their name on the Redfish Cup. Well, we started with 55 teams, and now we are down to our final five. Welcome to the final regular season stop of the 2009 Redfish Cup, coming to you from Biloxi, the Iberville, on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Charlie Thomason and Shane Pesquet roar into the Iberville riding a hot streak. They are your number one qualifiers heading into championship day. Rounding out our final five, Ken Chambers and John Merriweather, Mike and Michael Frenette, Chuck and C.J. Howard, Greg and Brian, the Watts brothers. Our Lake and Bay rules of the game on championship day are as follows. Two-man teams trying to catch a two-fish limit within an 18 to 30-inch slot limit. The team with the largest weight today takes home the cash. Our final five are ready to kick this thing off. But they'll have their eyes on the skies as a front that's moved into the Mississippi Gulf Coast area will no doubt affect teams as they prepare to make the long run, some as far as 90 miles. Pesque and Chambers and Merriweather take us to a spot that is loaded with reds. Will this honey hole produce again on championship day, though? Stay tuned. The Redfish Cup continues. Welcome back to the Redfish Cup from Biloxi, Iberville on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. And as you can see, the storms are building just south of the coast, and those storms have definitely come into play here today especially with teams making 90-mile runs to Hopedale, Louisiana. Two teams did just that. Thomason and Pesquet and Chambers and Merriweather both making that two-and-a-half-hour run to the exact same spot. A spot that made Thomason and Pesquet your number one qualifiers and Chambers and Merriweather your number two qualifiers. They've hit this spot hard for the last two days, boating over 40 fish per day between the two teams. The question is, will it hold up for one more day? There we go. It's Johnny. Cut off. Cut them off. You know what I think's happening? We're pushed back. Where we're fishing at, it's shallow from the bank out to about this point. At this point, it drops down to like 20 feet of water. But what's happening is when we're hooking these fish, they're coming up, and when we and when we get them close to the ledge, there's oyster shells just loaded on the bottom right there. They hit those big clumps, like big humps of uh, oyster shells, and it breaks us right off. So, you know, what we're going to have to do is kind of adapt by really horsing them in and trying to get them up to the surface before you get them close to the boat. Then we'll, we won't have that issue. We had a little issue with that yesterday, but we figured it out. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, Shane. Whoa. Come on. These fish fight so hard, this current. So not only are we trying to catch 30-inch fish, which is abnormal, then to catch them in this current makes it even worse because we got to horse them to get them in over the shells. There he is, good fish. Keep him coming. Come on, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about, baby. <laughs> there he is. Get him, Ken. All right, what we look like? You think he's over? Beautiful fish. Oh, oh, oh. Look at that. Oh. 30 and a quarter. There you go. It's on. Jack Fest is on. Keep fighting that current. I want you to get up. Large marge there, brother. Come on, fish. Hold on. That's big. Big fish. Big fish. That's a good fish. Get in that net. Oh no. Don't pull that. Get it. Got it. Sweet. Nice job. Alright. About 29 inches. He's about eight and a half though. I'm not complaining. But we're not winning with eight and a half. You gotta just hit him and hit him and hit him and hit him and they'll slow down a little bit. And, uh, you know, you'll see, like, Ken and them will hook up. We're hooking up. I mean, it's just, it gets kind of crazy there for a little bit. Please, Lord. 
Yes. Well, this ledge is still producing for these two teams, and it will keep them in contention for the title. Coming up, we get our first look at the leaderboard. Right now, Chambers and Merriweather still sitting on top with a comfortable lead, but Thomason and Pesquet, who are fishing the same hole as our leaders, are within striking distance. Coming up next, our leaders have shared this spot for two days, but will everyone remain friendly as the competition goes down to the wire? Can another team beat this place or these teams? Welcome back to the Redfish Cup and the final regular season event coming to you from Biloxi, the Iberville, Mississippi. And our crowd is ready to see how this thing shakes out. Your leaders, Chambers and Merriweather, and the second place team, Thomason and Pesquet, have fished inside of each other all day long. The father and son duo, Chuck and C.J. Howard, are lacking one more big bite to shake up the leaderboard. Right now, let's get back to Charlie Thomason and Shane Pesquet. Sitting about 20 yards from the leaders, Chambers and Merriweather, for three days these teams have boated over 40 fish between them. And now the question is, are there any fish left to make a final push up the leaderboard? I give us two hours and 45 minutes. Well, it's amazing how they come through and it's on, and then it stops, and then it's on. Schools, schools get a little thicker, and they, they, uh, you know, we get more opportunities to be doubling up and tripling up, and everybody's catching and. It keeps the school all reared up and happy and excited because things are feeling. <laughs> that fish is only six pounds. We just gained three pounds right there. One cast. Gained three pounds. Awesome. It'll be hard to keep secrets in this proximity, but Thomason and Pesquet have just tied Chambers and Merriweather. Now it's all right there. They're definitely in the mix to take the title in Biloxi. This is now a three-way dance for the win. Okay, over to Chambers and Merriweather, who've led for most of today. One, any minute now we gotta go. A two, I just feel like any minute now they're just gonna start to hit. School will swim by. What we need is to catch one and have another one swim up with it. No, oh, it was the cast. Oh. Look at all the spots on this thing. It's crazy looking. Oh, please measure. He measures 29 inches. But is he heavy? It looks like he's just over 9 pounds. An upgrade of ounces for Chambers and Merriweather. Will it be enough? to hold off the late charges of Thomason and Pesquet and Chuck and C.J. Howard. Let's head to our weigh-in where the crowd is ready to find out. Next up, Kim Chambers and John Merriweather. They'll need at least 19.33 pounds to knock off the Howards. 1878, and the Howards remain in first place right now. The Howards dodge Chambers and Merriweather, and now there's only one team left to beat. Charlie Thomason and Shane Pesquet finish second in Chalmette. Will they have enough to beat the Howards and take the title? They need 19.33 to Monster Redfish. 18.16, the Howards are your champions. Chuck and C.J. Howard take the victory here in D'Iberville. Well, congratulations. Chuck and C.J. Howard, they are your Redfish Cup champions from Biloxi, D'Iberville. Join us next time for the Crown Royal Redfish Cup Championship from Pensacola, Florida.